Great, thank you. So we are going to go through the first aid helper. And it's one of very, very um, wonderful and very important award for each and every one of us adventurer here. So I would just like to share to you who, who am I today? So I'm, my name is Joy. I am actually once an adventurer as well, like you. I also become a pathfinder. And now I am a mother of one adventurer and four pathfinders. So I'm a very busy mother. And I am very happy and glad to share to you this award, which is a first aid award, because I feel like I'm happy and I'm, I've got some, something to share with you because I work as a nurse. So I have done a lot of first aid um, with other people as well from work and even at home with my children. So I hope this afternoon will be something very exciting for everyone. So in this award, we have few things to look at and most of them we will be able to cover it this afternoon. So we have few things that say we will be able to demonstrate and treat simple wound or any scratches that happen to most of children at home. Look at about nosebleed, how we're gonna help and what we can do. Know the different type of bandages and then know how to clean up instruments and then understand what is a picture inside the emergency hospital, what they are doing. And of course, know some symbols. So it is pretty much exciting for this afternoon. So we're gonna go and talk about what is first aid, right? So it is an emergency or something that we have to do straight away after someone get hurt before any medical assistance or before the ambulance will be arriving, before, the doc before we go to see the doctor. This is something that we can do at home. And you might be thinking, why do we need to know first aid okay so there are people that are actually trained to be first aid trainer uh first aider i would say they are more likely working in a public places in a private places or even in our adventurer company we have first aid they have special training because they would always cover big and small injury but for us this afternoon at home we can be the first aid helper we can look at simple or basic first aid that will help each one of us while we deal things that happening at home so what are the things what are um injury that we can treat what when does first aid gonna be used so let's go this fracture it's a big word but it's something like talking about the broken bones okay so it could happen quite quite um common cramps or stiffness into your legs that will happen choking wounds cuts and bleedings and many many more so when you are looking at first aid, it's lots and lots of them, but being a first aid helper is very, very important, especially as children, okay? We love to be running around. We are very, very active, and it's so, um, so exciting to be out in the open, and oftentimes, we could hurt ourselves. We love to jump. Yeah, everyone loves to jump and accidents could happen. We also love climbing over the fence and even climbing up the trees. So in between what we are doing every day in our activity, we could be hurting ourselves. So even hopping or skipping, right? So a lot, a lot of activities because we are very active. As children, we love to do a lot of things and there, we could have some injury. So why do we need to understand about first aid um, at home? It is very important for children to know so that we are going to understand 
what mommy and daddy is going to do. It could be a small wound, a scratch, or a big one, but having a good understanding about what's going on is making us more not being scared to whatever accidents that happen. So we will be calm. We will not be screaming. We will not be scared about it. Then we will let our parents do what they needed to do to anything that is happening. Okay, so now let's go to our requirement number one. This is what we are going to look at in order to achieve our award this afternoon. So first, demonstrate how to treat an abrasion or a cut or a scratch and understand and describe the dangers of a dirty dressing or a dirty wound. So if it's dirty and all that. So what are we going to do? Okay, so number one, let's look at this. Very simple, right? We need to clean the cut or the wound with running water or simply wash with water. So this is available at home. We can always wash um, it quickly with water. So any scratch, even if it's your hand, in your knees, in your elbow, in your um, feet, then water is available there. But we wanted it to be more clean. So what we are going to do is next apply antiseptic. Oh, anti-joy, antiseptic is a big thing. Okay, so let's look at what this is. So antiseptic is something to clean the wound after the water. But this is actually very basic. Every one of us knows what a hand sanitizer is. We are using it every day and very often. So it's something like an alcohol base. So it's a hand sanitizer. What is going to, um, why are we gonna use that? In order for the wound not to let the bacteria or the germs go into it. So that means it would be healing quickly and it will not go bad. So it's important to wash, put some sanitizer to make it heal quickly. Then the next one that we are going to do is we are going to apply a bandage, okay? So a bandage could be something like that brown one in the picture. So it's like a sticky one. And also we can use kind of the other side, which is the roller bandage. Now, in order for us to to look at and understand about the bandage, we're gonna skip, so you might see in the screen that it will be requirement number three. Don't worry, we'll go back to requirements number two straight after the bandage. Um, so let's understand what is bandage because we are go that's a main thing that we need to use. So we need to identify, identify the different types of bandages that we are going to use, okay? So what is a bandage? So what, what, why we are talking about bandage, right? So it is a strip of woven material to bind up or to protect your wound, your scratch, or any injury in your body. So it's going to cover it, okay? So next is we are going to know that the bandage is going to hold a dressing in place, it will protect. So this child in the picture got a lot of um, bandage, got a bandage on his eye, can see something on his arm, okay? So these are something to put some dressings in place or to apply pressure to a part, which is sometimes it's bleeding and it's very important to have something to cover it to help stop the bleeding or sometimes it just used to put the wound covered and bind up so it will heal up easily. Okay, so next now we are gonna look at the different types of bandages, okay? So let's start with the one roller bandage. It usually comes in into that picture. So it's, a, it's in a roll type, 
The next one is the tubular bandage. So I'm gonna show you more details later. So don't worry if it's a little bit more of a lot of pictures there. The next one is adhesive bandage. And then the one, the fourth picture on your right is your triangular bandage. So we're gonna look at how we are going to use them, okay? So I will introduce you to Shanalise. She is my eight-year-old adventurer here at home. She will be my pretend patient on how to apply these bandages, okay? So first, we're gonna go into the adhesive bandage. Okay, so adhesive bandage is usually used in a small wound or a small cut. So if you can see that, you will just have to stick that adhesive bandage straight on into the small cut. So usually it's used for a smaller wound. You don't have to uh, put any other things, but I'm sure you have experience when you have a small cut, your mom or your parents will just put a little sticky bandage over it to cover. So next, we are going to look at a little bit of a bigger wound, which this time it happens to Shanley's foot. So with this one, oh, sorry, I think I've got that, okay. So this one is how to apply a roller bandage. Bigger wound usually needed a little bit of, um, a pad. So you put the pad on and this is now how your roller bandage is going. So you cover your pad, roll the bandage off across your feet, keeping it nice and neat. If it's in the foot, you try to look at and protect the wound and the bandage and the pad by putting your bandage neatly across your ankle and all over your foot. So that is how a roller bandage is used. The next one, the wound is in the arm. So in the arm, we can also use a roller bandage. So again, with a bigger wound, you apply a little bit of a pad, okay? Oops, sorry. You apply a pad there, there you go. And then this is going to be using a roller bandage because a pad goes in into your wound and then you apply the roller bandage. So again, you roll it off. So it's easy to cover because it comes in a roll. So you just undo and roll it over your arm to cover the pad and to keep your wand clean and dry. So it will not have any germs go into it. Okay, so it's very important that we have a clean materials to apply into that. The next one is we look at into the tubular bandage. Okay, so we have we pretend that Chanelise got a wound in her knee. So if you put a sticker bandage into this one, it could easily come off. So what we do, we are going to use a tubular bandage. So first, again, you apply the pad. Sorry, you apply the pad on top of your wound. And then you look at the tubular bandage. It comes in from your foot and puts it in place. So tubular bandage is something like with your socks, you got you no, know, the foot part is taken off. So it's similar to that. And it's a clean one to cover your wound, especially in your knee or in your elbow when it tends to move a lot, okay? So the next bandage 
is a triangular bandage. So triangular bandage is a cloth which is in a triangle form. Usually now used when you have a broken bone or you wanted your arm not to be moving. So in big injury, this comes quite very common, right? So it comes in a triangular bandage. So I only put a picture here with the arm so it's easy for us to, to look at how it's been put in. So the arm which got a broken bone will not be able to move um, normally or because it hurt a lot it will be keep in place with the help of your triangle bandage okay so now let's go back to our requirement number two which is talking about nosebleed okay so now so i think you can chat down whoever have experienced nosebleed Okay, so I think we can, we'll wait whoever comes in or anyone in the Zoom okay. or in the Facebook have experienced nose bleeding. Yeah, okay, yeah, there's quite a few here. We've got Jeremiah, we've got Hudson and Al Alf, oh. Alfie wow. Perez, okay, yeah. I'm sure they are one of the brave children, I'm sure they are. So... <laughs> Nosebleed could happen also to children and even to adults, right? So we might be thinking why there is nose bleeding. Okay, so sometimes it is because of a very dry air or a change, a rapid change of a temperature from hot to cold or from cold to very hot. Sometimes it's by scratching or picking our nose, so which we tend to do that or a physical injury if it happens to bump our head or our nose it could trigger and have some nose bleeding if we have some infection in our inside our nose or sometimes even with just blowing our nose too hard it could um, start <clears throat> some bleeding inside so those that had the nose bleed what did you do so you can write something exciting, um, first aid you've done at home. You can write down your answers in the chat. Okay, yes, just write and tell us. What did you do what for your you nose bleed? Oh, pinch nose. Somebody oh. says pinch your nose. Yes, yes, well done. Put tissues in your nose, okay. Oh, that's exciting, <laughs> that is exciting. <laughs> All right, Brother Mancini, do we have any anything coming out from Facebook? Um, yeah, I mean, we've got some uh, uh, people that said that they've never had nosebleeds before. So yes, uh, for them, yeah. that's, that's never been an issue. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, um, in terms of what they do for nosebleeds, um, people say they just wipe their nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can do a lot. We do do things right to help it stop yes thank you thank you very much for sharing so let's look at some very very simple steps that we can do when we have no split okay so if one of our, our brother or sister or even in our club or someone that you um know or around with have a nose bleeding let that child or that person to sit down calm down not to lie down but sit down and lean forward so look at this in the picture it's leaning forward right so not moving your head backwards forward yes you're right the one who said pinch your nose yes need to pinch your nose there so that it apply a little bit of a pressure because it actually would help stop the bleeding it's not very quick. It will take a little bit wa a while before it stops straight. So we're not going to panic about it. Sometimes it takes 10 to 15 minutes before the bleeding will stop. But we'll just continue to pinch our nose. And at that point, sometimes we do panic because obviously we pinch our nose. How could we breathe? So we need to 
if that is us, if it happens to us, we have to know and understand. We can open our mouth to breathe. And you can also tell someone having a nosebleed to do the same when it happens to them. So breathe your mouth so that you can breathe naturally. You're not going to panic about it. Or sometimes you can also apply ice pack or any frozen pack of peas. You wrap it in a towel and put it on top of your nose, just between your eyes there, your nose, to put the coldness in there. So sit forward. And then we're going to pinch the nose. Breathe through your mouth and apply ice pack. Very, very simple. And I'm sure when you know that, you're not going to panic when nose bleeding will happen. Okay, so that is covering our requirement number two for our award this afternoon. You can actually watch more video in the YouTube when you have access to this one or even your parents can look at that for you to see how it's been done, how to treat nosebleed, how the steps has been done. So you can practice and watch it at home, okay? So we, but let's go to our next one, which we are going, we are talking about first aid, then now we need to make or understand about a first aid kit. So it's like something where all your, all your um, equipments are in. So similar to this picture, it's in a box or maybe in a bag where everything comes in. Now we need to look at inside the first aid kit. So what is inside? Okay. So here at the very top, we have the adhesive bandage, your sticky bandage, and we have seen why how to apply it so it's very important to be inside our first aid kit then we have the roller bandage as part now so we have two bandages in there we have the ghost pads or those pads the white ones that we put on top of our wound okay and then we have disinfectant yes alcohol wipes or your hand sanitizer is important to be part of our first aid kit what else we have the needle we have scissors and we have tweezers so these are sharp objects that goes into your first aid kit but why is it important okay so your scissors is going to be used when you need to cut your roller bandage or any pads so you use them to cut into size that fits into the wound then your needle is there it's a very sharp one it usually comes with a cover so it's not something to worry when it's inside your first aid kit or in your first aid bag this one will help you to pick something, a very tiny object that goes under your skin. When the human hand is not able to hold it, your needle can try and get it out with the tip of the needle, very sharp. The same as your tweezers, the picture on your, the other side, your tweezers. They are used to pick out any foreign objects in the wound area which sometimes our hand would not be able to pick. So that's why it's very important for them to be part of our first aid kit. Another thing that is also important is your thermometer. And I'm sure this time it's much, much needed because we need to know if we have temperature, we can check if it's too high or if it's just normal, okay? So if we feel unwell, we feel hot, um, we tend to touch our forehead or our mom will touch, oh, I feel so hot. This one is something we can use to tell if it's very high or just coming down to, to look at it. So I've got 
three pictures there, mainly because these are different types of thermometer that you might have seen. So the one in the green picture, they are tend to be used by mom with babies and even the one in the middle sometimes. And then the one on the other side, which is the one with the yellow color, is something that we more likely seen very, very much often everywhere, even in the shops or even when we go in due to testing that your temperature is good with our current situation in the world. So thermometer is a wonder, uh, is a very important part of our first aid kit. Okay, so those are the basic one. Maybe when you can look at a first aid kit at home, ask to your parents, and you might see a lot more of a different ones from here. It's still okay. We can put as important things into that bag as long as we have the basic one, right? So when something happened at home, your mom can ask you the first aid kit, then you would identify which one mom or dad is asking you. So let's now go to our next one. It is telling us how to sterilize one of the following, which is thermometer, tweezers, or needle. And why it is very important to sterilize this one as part of a first aid kit. Okay, again, you might be saying, oh, sterilize is a very big word for us, Auntie Joy. So let's um, look at this one. Let's go into the thermometer first. So your thermometer is something that you, uh, you can sterilize by just simply cleaning it, okay? So cleaning it with, um, water or damp cloth after each use before we put it back into our kit. The needle is, I can see something that raised hand. I don't know if they're gonna ask the question. Okay. Felicitas, uh, you got your hand raised. Do you want to ask a question? What does sterilize mean? Yes, I, I'm just about, yes, thank you for that, yes. So I'm, I'm trying to picture this. Thank you very much for that. Yes. So I am starting to tell you about these three ones that are very important as part of our um, requirement to sterilize, so clean. So with the thermometer, okay, sterilize is cleaning and making sure that it's ready to be used. And most especially, it will not have any germs in it so that when you use it again, it's ready to be used. So that's the thermometer. It's a straightforward clean it with a damp cloth and then you can store it away back into your, in your kit. The next one in the middle is the needle. This one, I would say we don't do sterilization or ster we don't need to sterilize this at home. This usually comes with a, a a lid, a cover, so we have to just keep it there. And if possible, we can just dispose it after because it's very dangerous of cleaning sharps like such as needles at home. But then we uh, okay, just, just a second, um, Joy. Uh, Cassie, yes. we are having some constant um, interaction from your line. Could you please keep your line muted, Cassie, please? Thank you very much. And all the other young people, please, if you've got any question, please write it down. Do yes. not unmute and speak. We would like to encourage, if you've got a question, write it down. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are proceeding. I'm, right. I'm just going to mute everybody. If you could, Joy, just please unmute yourself and pass your quiza as well. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yes, I'm back. Okay, so next now we look at tweezers, the one on the side, okay, that picture. So tweezers is something that we can reuse, we can use again, right? So this is now we focus into how we sterilize this one. So I'll bring you to the next slide. 
So let's talk about- A question for you there, Joy. Um, there's a question that's come up on the yes. chat saying, what's the highest at the moment it can go? Okay, so when the, temp the highest that the thermometer can go, it could go up to 40 or even over 40 degrees Celsius. Or it depends upon in your, in your, if you're using Fahrenheit or Celsius. So I'm, I'm basing into Celsius, which is 40 or even above 40 degrees Celsius. And that number is very, very dangerous. We need to look at our temperature between 36 to 37 is, is very, very good, okay? So it could go up higher. So it's very important that we have that thermometer so we can keep checking a temperature for someone who is not well at home. Okay, is that okay? So let's go into focus into tweezers. This is the one that we dealt more in how to sterilize. So tweezers are a small tool used in picking up objects that are too small, as I mentioned, that could not easily be handled by the human hand. So something like this. So tweezers are used to pick out splinters. So if you got something in your skin, if it's something in a splinter that actually break under the skin, then our hand would not be able to get it out. And the tweezers is going to help us. Then sp other slivers of glass that would go under the skin or any other tiny objects that is so difficult to pick out using our human hand. So here we are looking what sterilized means. Just before you proceed, Joy, so, yes. there's a follow-up there follow question. What do yes. you do if you don't have a thermometer? Okay, yes. Thank you for that question. Yes, yes, it could happen that we don't have the access to a thermometer. As I mentioned earlier, you might see your parents like touching your forehead, but you need to use the back of your hand because it is more sensitive rather than the palm of your hand. So you can touch your forehead like that or even touch your chest. If it's too hot, then that would say that your temperature is high. So any, anything that feels hot at the back of your hand is telling you that something is not right. So it's, it's high, the temperature is high. Okay, so you can use your hand um, at home. That's the first thing that you can do if you don't want, if you don't have the thermometer. Is that, is that right? Is that okay? So let's go into the sterilize. So it's making your instrument, or let's talk about the tweezer, making it clean and making it free from bacteria or any other, or germs, okay? So what are we going to do? Let's going to wash our tweezers with soap and water. Then sterilize or use the alcohol wipe or even alcohol gel that you have at home. Let it um, go over to your tweezer. And then after that, you just let it dry, just air dry. And that tweezers is, be, is going to be ready for the next use, okay? So that's why earlier I said your needle is very, very dangerous, but very helpful in a way. But we don't need to clean it, wash it and all that. We need to put it away after we use it once. Okay, so that is how we are going to sterilize and why it's very important. So when it's clean, it's not bringing any germs into the wound. And it's when we use it after using, we clean it so that it will be ready for the next use, okay. So now the next one is a requirement that we are going to visit an emergency room or any med emergency setting hospital. But it is very, very, even if we do it in our respective places, it's very difficult this time because of the COVID-19. We would not be able to, if possible, we stay at home and not to be going and visit into these places because it's, um, it's very, very um, dangerous. 
what I'm going to do this afternoon is I'm going to show you some video of what is going to be treated and what is happening inside an emergency room. And also, I will be showing you what an emergency room looks like. Okay, so it will just have to give us an idea. After a small injury happening at home, we are going to go into a hospital. So then we are not going to be scared when we are there. Okay. Um, just before you start, there is a question that's just come to Joy. Sorry, Pastor. There's a question that's just come to you. Um, yes. Somebody's asking, I think this is in terms of sterilization. Can you use yes. vinegar? Another one is saying consternation. I don't know. Um, can you use vinegar to sterilize or consternation? I don't know what is consternation. Do you know any of this? It worked for me as well. Vinegar, yes, it has yeah. been used with in early times. Okay. They have used vinegar to sterilize, but you have to soak it. But after using the vinegar, you need to make sure you wash it and clean it with just clean water. Because the vinegar could go into your, the particles from a vinegar could go into your wound and might infect your wound again. Mm. So it's, it, it's something that has been used in the olden days. Without, before the alcohol swab and alcohol gel come out, they have used that one, yes. Thank but you. But you just have to be very careful because we don't want to introduce the vinegar into the wound directly. So we still have to clean it with um, the basic really is soap and water is the best one that we can do. Okay, All right. thank you. Okay, yeah, let's proceed. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so. I'm gonna to share to you, this is what are they going in the hospital. I'm, have I got the screen right now, Pastor? We, we can see Cincinnati Children's uh, something something. Is that the one? Have you seen the video? Yes, emergency urgent okay. care. Uh, it just says, children, the outcome together. Um, but the video is not playing, so. Departments How about patients this with different levels of illness or injury. Can we focus on checking no. your child? We, we can't. This is a video that I've played. Okay. And are you are you playing it on the website? I'm playing with the YouTube that I've tried to. Okay. What you do? Go to your next session. If you send me the link, um, just if you can send me the link, and just keep How on the next this? question. How about the screen, Pastor? Is this one visible? Is no. You... Full screen, Joy. Different levels of illness or injury. Still not. Yeah, no, I we, think we're just on the screen where your PowerPoint presentation is, and there's a a Safari window in front of it. Yeah. So if I... it could be that you just need to stop your share and reshare the screen you're trying to the video. Yes, uh, okay, okay. So I'm gonna stop that one and maybe I'll share directly from the one that I've this one. Okay. Let's and then um, optimize it for I video as well. Share my screen. How about this one? Can we focus on checking your child yeah, for dangerous conditions that need okay. treatment right away? All right. So, just so this is going to just show us a little of how treatment has been done in the injury. Can we focus on checking your child for dangerous conditions that need treatment right away? Children arrive through our front door, ambulance bay, or by helicopter. We care for the sickest children first. This can result in waits for other families. We try hard to evaluate each child as quickly as possible. We appreciate your patience while we handle the many emergencies that come to us. If you're not sure of why you are waiting, please ask one of our staff members. Here's what we will do together when you bring your child to our emergency department. We'll register you. A nurse will take your child's vital signs and make sure your child is safe. You may need to wait in the lobby. We'll take you to a treatment room when one becomes available. 
Our team will examine your child and order any tests, treatments, or medications to help in diagnosing and treating the issue. For many illnesses, tests and treatments aren't necessary. Our nurses and doctors will work together to monitor your child's progress and plan care. At home. Okay, please follow so, your doctor's instructions. That's it that I wanted to share about what's happening in So what's happening in the emergency room. So you go in, they are going to look at who is not very well to be treated first, okay? So we'll go back into what are we expecting when in a nurse, in an emergency area, what is in there? What's happening in that uh, place? So this is another video. That Welcome I'm gonna... to our new emergency department here at Airedale. My Sorry. name is Dr. Dineski, I'm one of the consultants, and I'd like to take a few moments to show you around our new facility. So this is our new waiting room. Um, this is a much improved facility, allowing much more space for patients think, who are uh, to be seen by the doctor or the nurse practitioner. <laughs> We have bending facilities, Sorry. extended seating areas, and patient information screens. I can screens. see that. This is our triage room. <laughs> okay. so if you arrive You're... to the emergency department, you'll quickly be seen by a triage you... nurse. We'll assess how to what do is happening? And direct you to the right Your... department. Your screen, I think you shared, is probably oh, another okay. video thing from well, the, the one you saw. Yeah, but try and share the screen again, and then... Uh, be, yeah, because we can only see you at the moment. The screen you are sharing is off. Yeah. So I'll share my screen. Okay, yeah. And That's better. Is that this one now? Sorry. Okay. Yes, so this is an emergency setting, emergency room. Meeting areas and patient information screens. This is our new triage room. When you arrive to the emergency department, you'll quickly be seen by a triage nurse who will assess how severe your injury or illness is and direct you to the right area of the department. This is our main treatment area where we have 18 purpose-built treatment cubicles where we can treat children, adults, patients with minor injury and illness and those with more severe injury and illness. All our rooms have been kitted out with state-of-the-art technology for monitoring and we have cupboards containing all the equipment that we need to provide immediate care at the patient bedside. This is our butterfly room. This room has been specifically designed for those patients who suffer from dementia. We've added additional features such as the interactive fish tank, dementia-specific seating and ceiling panels to make the experience more comfortable for patients who may be confused and distressed when they're in the emergency department. We're very proud to have this beautiful stained glass window depicting the three peaks, which is here in memory of one of our colleagues, Dr. Lee Jepson. We're very proud to have it as a centre point in our workspace. This is our new resuscitation room. This is where we treat the most ill and injured patients. We're very lucky that we now have four dedicated resuscitation bays, including one paediatric bay. When patients arrive by ambulance, they'll be brought to our ambulance assessment area. Here you'll be greeted by a nurse and a member of the reception team where your details will be taken and some basic observations and history details will be taken to dictate whether you have moved into our resuscitation room or into the main work area or even into the waiting room. Okay, so that is what's happening in an emergency room. So just, um, to, just to remind you, your time is exhausted, Joy. I don't know how much I more know, you... I know, I look at that. Oh, okay. Yes. So uh, the last, I'll just go and share this one, Pastor, is the, the last, I'm going to miss that activity, but we are, I'm going to share the last one for you. No problem. Okay. Which is. Okay. So it's the last one, it's very, which is very important for us to look at is the sign of the first eight. So. It's with a green one on the background and your white cross. So it is something that would tell us where our equipments are, whereas the first aid kit is uh, located. So um, we could see easily where we are going to get all our, our equipment. So 
those covered everything much and then at home i would like you to look at your bible and read matthew chapter 20 uh chapter 26 verse 51 in order for you to understand that in the bible jesus also did first aid so as a first aid helper i hope the presentation this afternoon have given you some wonderful ideas and be ready for any emergency. Oh, yes. That's